Okay, now I'm going to show you how to manipulate his face to exaggerate certain features. For this, So for this original shot, what I actually did was enlarged his eyes to make him look extra sad. And so the great thing about Vine is that we're exporting the shot at 480 by 480, which is a lot smaller than most cameras film at. Most cameras these days film high definition, which is at least 720p, if not 1080. Because of this, we can enlarge certain facial features and not lose any resolution. You could enlarge facial features no matter how many pixels you're shooting at, but you're gonna it's going to often look soft or blurry if you're not shooting at the correct resolution. So what we're gonna do is downgrade all of our footage besides our eyes so that the resolution matches. I'm gonna show you how to do this here. I'm going to take off this layer. So we have just our base plate and I'm going to pre-compose all of this. So I'm gonna hit Command Shift C or I could go layer pre-compose down here if I needed to and I'm going to hit OK. We have this new composition, everything's good. And I'm going to hit Command K or Composition Composition Settings and change this to 480 by 480. And so now we have this new layer made and I'm going to just shrink this down to the size where it fits within the screen. So it looks like 45 is about correct. And now I'm going to export this before I do that, I want to turn off this layer so that we're only seeing the raw footage that has now been changed to a square because that's how Vine is exported. This step isn't necessary if you're not exporting to Vine. If you were wanting to export to a regular video, this step wouldn't be necessary. However, I do suggest downgrading somewhat if you're wanting to enlarge features because those features will look soft and slightly blurry if you're making them larger because the resolution wasn't shot in camera. So I've downgraded this to 480 by 480 and now I'm going to export it. So I'm going to go add to render queue and export this. I can leave it lossless. And I'm going to import that video file that we just shot, TED Plate 480, and drag that right on top of the shot that we just exported. We can see that it looks the same. And then I'm going to, with it selected, go Animation, Track, and Mocha AE. Hit OK. So we have the shot brought in here. And if your settings don't make this automatically look square because often it doesn't work that way then you can go over here to clip and click on custom and make sure that it's set to one often it'll default to something other than that and you'll see that the image will look squished make sure that you just come here in settings and make it custom and then set this pixel aspect ratio to one now i'm going to go back here to track and i'm just going to simply track the eyes again Now I'm going to export the tracking data. This time I'm going to actually export it with After Effects corner pin. And then hit copy to clipboard. Now I can go back into After Effects. And then on this layer here, I can hit this short key or go layer, new, null object. And then I can hit control V and paste the data on there. So now we have this null object that's been pasted here and it looks like it's tracking on very well. I'm going to select the original TED plate, bring it into a new composition. And I'm going to now also track this in Mocha. Hit OK. And now I'm going to track each eye separately. So I have a box around that, and now I have a box around this. And then I can track both of them. And 
export tracking data, and then make sure that I'm using the transform data feature on the export. Hit save, and I'm going to call this one left eye, which I have already previously made a file with that name, and so I'm going to overwrite it, but we're going to call it left eye. Come back here into After Effects, have this layer selected, and then click Window, Mocha Import Plus, Load File. Click on Left Eye Text here, and then click on Stabilize. Hit Apply, and then we're going to eliminate movement completely. And then I hit OK, and if I play through this, I can see that it's been stabilized around that eye. Now there's a lot of jumping going around. We know that in real life the size of the eye doesn't change that much because Ted is pretty much still, the camera's not moving. So we can go through here and delete all of the scale keyframes so that it's only adjusting the rotation and position. And now if we zoom in on the eye, we can see that it's stabilized around the eye there, which is exactly what we want. So that looks good. And now I can call this plate left eye, export tracking data, make sure that we have transform data selected. And then I'm going to come here and call this right eye. Come back here into After Effects and I'm going to take this plate and create a new one, new composition, and then go back here, Mocha Import Plus, and load the right eye text. And then stabilize. Eliminate movement completely. And then again, click on S for scale and delete all of the scale properties. We zoom in on the eye, we can see that it's being stabilized to the eye, so the eye isn't moving. Perfect. And then we can call this layer, this composition, right eye. Okay, now let's move back into our original shot here, where we have Ted, and this layer is 480 by 480. And I can now take this left eye drag it on top and we can see it's much larger because this layer is still a full HD and, and now I'm going to take this layer and draw a nice mask around the eye so I have that eye and then I can now drag it on top of this eye here and as you can see, it's huge in comparison. And I'm going to adjust it so that it's not covering up part of the nose. Move it around a little bit. Bada bing, bada boom. And then I'm going to sharpen it just a tad. So I'm going to go here and click Sharpen. And bring this up to, let's try 25. Oh, 25. There we go. And you can see it just makes a slight difference bringing it out a little bit. So there we have that huge eye and I'm going to hit M a couple times and just feather it in a, a bit. So that looks good there. And I'm going to repeat the same process for the other eye. And I might as well move the anchor point to the center of the eye as well. And then hit G and just draw this nice mask around the eye. And then hit M for mask a couple times and just feather it in a little bit. That might be too much for, and then we can go to the left eye and copy this sharpen effect onto that. So now we have his eyes and they're nice and enlarged. The next step is to drag, is to select both of these layers and parent them to the null, which we know here to be the eye track. 
Now if we play through this, we can see that the eyes are stuck onto it. And that looks awesome. Now you'd be surprised how little adjustments can really make the bear look cuter in terms of the eye placement. So if we bring the eyes too close to each other, then we can, we're going to see it doesn't look quite as cute. It looks kind of weird. It looks more like an alien. So it's important that we're fine-tuning the eyes because little adjustments make a huge difference. And so now we have the bear and we can go back here into this composition and actually turn off this. This is our exported video track. Go back into our original composition here and then we're not going to turn the eye movement back on but we can turn the mouth back on. And now we can see that he's animating his mouth again. And we could make his eyebrows adjust animate as well. So I'm going to turn this back on. His eyes are going to come back in here, but we've added the bigger eyes on top in this layer, so it's going to work just fine. And now we can see that his eyebrows still animate in this layer. And then of course the next step would be to rotoscope out the hands here so that it looks like he's sitting in the chair by himself.